updating all the other phones to make sure that this is a fair fight. <laughs> Morning. Another day, another rule test. Today, we're doing it on the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. And if you're not familiar, I'm gonna use this phone as my normal phone. My SIM card's even in it. We're gonna kind of talk about the things that I like and don't like. We'll also take photos on it and some of its competitors and put those up on the screen so you guys can be the judge of how it does. Also, we'll check in on the battery. Now, I'm gonna do all that while we kind of explore my hood and it is proper winter here now and kind of cold. So I figured while we test out this phone, let's go find some of my favorite winter foods in my neighborhood. But before we do that, first things first. Coffee, check. Of course, regardless of the time of year, coffee's a favorite food. I will say though that the temperature of the coffee changes depending on the temperature of the year. Now this is Copper Mug, a local spot right by my apartment that actually opened right before the pandemic started. And I've actually gotten to know the owner a little bit, even, even brought me some uh, pumpkin bread to try. But I do not envy the challenge that he has had trying to get this place to survive throughout all that is and has been COVID. And besides the fact that they make good coffee, one of my favorite things is this pretty large, unusually large back patio. And he even puts out heat lamps during the winter. Now the FE in the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE stands for Fan Edition. And just like the other Fan Edition devices of the past, it's kind of their way of making a more budget friendly version of their flagships. And as such, it shares a lot of the same specs as the S21, but for $100 less. Now we have the same cameras for the most part, which we'll get to later, the same processor, same design, screen technology, etc. But there are some differences. Now starting with the design, it's slightly larger and has a larger screen by a bit, which is a hair smaller than the S20 FE's, and the camera bump on the back is now part of the back and made out of the same plastic material compared to the metal that's wrapped around the frame of both of these phones, but the S21 actually like blended into the camera bump. A design choice that I personally liked, along with, well, the purple models, like Thanos looking vibe with the two-tone colors. The device is lighter though than the S21 in spite of being larger, but it does look and feel just slightly less premium, I'd say. While we're out, by the way, why don't we have today's sponsor clean the apartment? This is the Narwhal T10, a clever two-in-one robot vacuum and mop and winner of Time's Best Inventions of 2020. Now, besides using LiDAR technology to map your home and have it efficiently plan out its route, it can also get dirt in the corners more efficiently. Because of its D-shaped design, it has wider coverage when cleaning corners. Plus, its two triangular brushes effectively pull dust into the suction inlet and are even designed to not get tangled by hair as well as not spin off the dust back out onto the floor. It also has a time of flight sensor that helps it intelligently control the sweeping distance between obstacles and the robot within 15 millimeters. And it can also do all of this quietly. Choose between two vacuum modes that both only put out 55 or 65 decibels of sound, the sound level of a normal conversation, by the way, and even 45 decibels while mopping just five decibels shy of the noise level of a library. It's also easy to maintain. The mop component self dries itself to prevent bacteria and the washboard is easily removable to make it easy to clean. And thanks to the non-linear flow inside the dustbin and bilateral dust filtration system, the dustbin is even easy to clean. If you wanna learn more about the Narwhal T10, check it out at the link below. And thanks again to Narwhal for sponsoring this video. It's always so interesting to me how like the food trucks here in New York, especially in my neighborhood for some reason, have someone like parked in the spot that they want to be in all the time. And then when they show up, they swap. And then when they leave, they swap back. I don't know the rules, but it's fascinating. It seems the Apple store has installed heat lamps and like LEDs for people waiting outside. I'm a little early for the truck I want to show you guys, but I know I'm in the right spot because their logo is on that van and that guy is wearing their sweater.
Those guys have this down to a science. Now, I was recently introduced to this truck, even though it's only really a few blocks from my apartment. And normally there's a huge line. But of course, because I was there before they actually opened, I was one of the first people to get my taco. But there were still people lining up behind me already. Now, it's a taco truck that actually became popular for a specific type of taco, a birria taco. Now, birria roughly translates to mess, kind of makes sense. But basically, it's a beef stew that they make, and then they turn that into tacos, mulitas, and tostadas. But the move, though, is to get the tacos and the consomme, which is like the broth and a little bit of meat from the soup that they make, and you dip the taco in the soup. It's delicious, and it just, it just warms your insides. While we're here, though, let's talk about the cameras on the phone. Now, the cameras on the S21 FE are very similar to the S21. We have the same main camera, which is the same camera as the S20 FE, a similar ultra-wide, albeit slightly smaller and a hair less wide, maybe. It seems to be the same exact camera as the S20 FE, actually, and a significantly smaller resolution telephoto lens with a much lower resolution of 8 megapixels versus the 64 megapixels of the S21. And funny enough, it seems to be the same telephoto as the S20 FE. Also, the front camera is a 32 megapixel camera versus the 10 megapixel on the S21, but guess what? The same one from the S20 FE. In fact, the battery is the same 4,500 milliamps as the S20 FE, and it starts at the same six gigs of RAM, the same as the S20 FE. Which brings us to why I feel like the fan edition of these phones actually exists in the first place. It's to move inventory. Whatever leftover inventory they have, they basically bring down to these fan edition devices and lower the price. It helps them at least get something for their leftover inventory. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, as it means consumers can get a brand new phone for a much lower price point. But it does give us some insight, I believe, into why Samsung puts certain features in these FE devices. Welcome to Hanan, a place that I started coming to actually in the very beginning of the pandemic. Partially because at the time they had just opened this outdoor space and tables were well spaced out. And since we were outside, it felt a lot safer. And then came winter that year and they put up these cool little like geodesic domes of plastic around the tables outside. And they put a little heater out here to keep things warm enough that you could actually sit out here and enjoy a meal. But honestly, I would sit out in the freezing cold if they told me I had to because this place is some of the best udon in town. Also, they like, they stamp their egg. <coughs> Fell back in the soup, everything is fine. Now the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is $699 unlocked. And if you look at it by itself as a $699 unlocked phone, it's a pretty good deal, just as the S20 FE was. But when you look at it with the current landscape, phones that are out in that price range and even look at it against some of Samsung's own devices now, it may not be as much of a no-brainer as the S20 FE was. Now everyone I know, and I tend to agree with them, thinks that the Pixel 6 is a much better deal. It is $100 less than this phone, it feels more premium to me personally, and I personally also like the photos that come out of it a bit better. But it is only available in very specific countries. And you can import it, but of course then it becomes more expensive and less of a great deal compared to this phone. The bigger issue to me is that the starting price of the S20 was $1,000 compared to the S20 FE's $700, so $300 less. Whereas the S21 started at $800 and the S21 FE is $700. So only $100 less and not that good of a deal. And the other thing is the S20 FE came out seven months after the S20, whereas the S21 FE came out a full 10 days shy of a year from the S21. And so while the S20 FE came in right between the last flagship phone launch and the next one coming, this one comes right before the S22 or whatever it's gonna be called is about to launch. Okay, firstly, let's talk about the battery. It is 8.18 p.m. and we are at 
9%. Here's my screen on time on usage for anyone who's curious about that. Obviously, keep in mind today was a real world test. And so I used the phone and filmed using it a lot more than you probably normally would in a normal day. So here is my battery usage and screen on time for a, another day that was a more normal day. So the battery life is meh. It's not amazing. Um, it's not too bad though, considering the price point and other phones that are around this price point. Now, at the end of the day, I do like this phone. For a $700 phone, it, again, if you only look at it just in a vacuum by itself, it's a good phone. But it just comes at a time where there's a lot of other phones in this price range from a lot of different manufacturers. And even comparing it against Samsung's own lineup, there's not as big of a gap between the two for the price. And the biggest thing that I'd probably tell anybody who's thinking about buying this phone is if you can, try to just wait a little bit longer to see when the S22 comes out, what that will actually bring as well as what the starting price of that is because it might not be too far off from this one. Now maybe you still do want this phone after the S22s come out. Great, but if you can wait till the S22s come out, there might even be some slight discounts for this phone to make it just that much more worth it. Again, if you can wait the very short amount of time between now and the next launch. Now there you go, I will leave a link below to the best price and the best deals that I could find on this phone, as well as some of the other phones that I showed during this video. If you're curious about all those, those links will be below. Thanks again, Narwhal, for sponsoring this video. You can check out the Narwhal T10 at the link below. Hope you guys enjoyed this though. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the video about this phone. Always curious to hear your guys' thoughts. But if you like this video, please thumbs up or share it. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where it subscribes so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching. Hot soup in winter, right? Nothing better. I feel like the Amazon is just messing with people. Just warms. It's no truck. Why is that truck so loud? There's like a moving truck that is blasting polka. I don't know what kind of music that is. <laughs> Filming in the city.